the world of DirectX 12 performance gets a little more interesting with the release of the new Fable Legends benchmark. Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective, I'm Ryan Shrout. Our quest to really learn everything we can about DirectX 12 and how it's going to change performance for CPUs and GPUs has been an interesting uh, path, right? It kind of started with the introduction of DirectX 12, learning about it from Microsoft, learning about Mantle, then learning about Vulkan kind of uh, from an educational standpoint. And then our first kind of hands-on performance testing came with the FutureMark uh, API overhead test, which is very much a purely synthetic, we're going to draw as many things as we can and see what the draw call uh, rates that we can max out were. That, those were interesting results. Uh, and then we looked at, more recently, the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark, which is based on a real game engine and a real game that is coming out. Uh, an RTS that does put heavy emphasis on how many things can we draw on the screen at one time. And we remember those results, it came back very interesting about how it's scaled between CPU platforms and how it's scaled between GPU platforms. If you didn't check those out, you should check out those videos and those stories over at PCPer.com. Uh, today we're looking at our third kind of actual test of DirectX 12. And this comes from Microsoft and Lionhead Studios in the form of a benchmark for Fable Legends. Fable Legends is a free-to-play, uh, multiplayer kind of action RPG that's coming out later in 2015. Uh, but Microsoft worked with a handful of people to get a benchmark in our hands that kind of evaluates performance uh, across many different aspects. Now what's interesting about the Fable Legends benchmark compared to Ashes of the Singularity is that Microsoft was very upfront about this being uh, more of a teller of GPU performance as opposed to CPU performance. They claim that with a fairly modest quad-core 3.5 gigahertz processor, uh, you know, you could get that going back to 2600K, 3770K, what have you, uh, that at that speed you're pretty much maxed out on CPU performance even with the top level graphics card that exists today. Because of that, uh, rather than go through five, six, seven uh, CPU platforms like we did in the previous results, we instead focused on GPUs. So we have uh, results today from the 980Ti, the Fury X, 980, 390X, and a handful of other cards, a total of eight different GPUs. Um, and the, the reason, I guess, that Microsoft kind of made that claim or, or wanted to make that point to us is that they believe that Fable Legends is more representative of a traditional AAA title where rather than trying to draw as much stuff as possible on the screen, which is what Ashes of the Singularity was doing, this is more focused on how uh, how pretty can we make things, for lack of a better term, right? What kind of new rendering techniques and capabilities does DirectX 12 bring to the table, both in terms of improving performance in those aspects, but also just improving the image quality that we see on the screen. So uh, I think it's fair to say that that is more what we're used to if you look at benchmarks like Grand Theft Auto or Metro Last Light or Crisis 3. Those are much less about how much stuff can we cram on a screen at one time to increase draw call counts, uh, and instead are more about, you know, how can we make these pixels look better uh, through shading and, and different shadowing techniques and that type of stuff. Not that there is a benefit to the other side, right, as we saw with the Assassin's Creed Unity fiasco that occurred. I will say uh, right off the bat, the, the benchmark of Fable Legends looks gorgeous. There's not a whole lot of going on. It's a lot of static scenery um, passing through uh, the forest and you do pass one character, an ogre, uh, and looking through several different kind of landscapes that will exist in the Fable Legends game. It looks awesome and we have some video playback and some screenshots at the uh, PCPer.com store if you want to check those out. Uh, but it, it looks amazing and it is pretty heavy uh, in terms of performance. Now, real quick, the results that they give you in the benchmark are interesting. You get, uh, like kind of at the end of the benchmark, you get a combined score, which is actually just your average frame rate multiplied by 100, uh, but the larger number makes it easier to compare part to part, I guess. So, uh, 2,795, 2,795 is a score. That actually means your, your frame rate is 27. 0.9 frames per second on average across it. Uh, that final screen also gives you a breakdown of GPU timings, uh, kind of in uh, several different categories. You've got your G-buffer rendering, dynamic lighting, global illumination, uh, shader simulation, post-processing, transparency. All of those are actually broken down in a millisecond timestamp. Again, averaged throughout the entirety of the benchmark to give you an idea of what tasks were taking the most time on that particular GPU. It's a lot of data. I don't think a lot of people are going to spend a whole lot of time focusing on it, but it's interesting to compare things like 
uh, global illumination is actually two to three times faster on GeForce GPUs than it is on Radeon GPUs. And then there are other instances where the Radeon GPUs are faster uh, at uh, uh, compute shader simulation and culling than the GeForce GPUs. It's interesting to kind of see how the architectural back and forth works there. Also, for the real crazy people out there, um, the Fable Legends outputs a CSV file with, I think, 70-something columns of data for each frame that is rendered. And it's, it's a huge amount of data, everything from timings about uh, your, your GPU thread count, uh, your game stalls, your, obviously your frame times, you know, even like how much time did the GPU spend rendering fog in this frame? Like it's extreme amount of detail. We're not gonna go to it here. Uh, and actually we didn't really have enough time with it to, to dive into what much of that detail gets into. But I'm hoping that we'll still have access to that data when the actual game is released. It'll be more interesting when you have AI and characters and effects and spells and actual gameplay going on. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the results that we had from all this. We tested at 1080p and 4K. Those are really the only two resolutions um, that you know you would expect, or the, the only two resolutions that Microsoft actually kind of set the benchmark up to allow right now. There was a 720p low settings, but it's mostly for integrated graphics that we didn't test today. Um, at 1080p, the GeForce GTX 980 Ti was able to produce 80.8 .8 frames per second or so. So really not that high, right? We're not talking about 200 frames per second versus 180. We're talking about 80 versus 76 for the Fury X, right? So these are competitive numbers. These are worthwhile uh, differences. This is about a 10% gap here. We also tested the 980 versus versus the 390X, and pretty much across the board, the 980 was a little bit slower than the R9 390X. The GTX 960 was a little bit slower than the R9 380, and then GTX 950 was actually a little bit faster than the R7 370. So those are kind of our eight cards that you use for comparisons and kind of like matching price points. Um, you can look through the benchmark results uh, at PCPro.com. We're throwing up some of them here, right? 1080p, we also ran it at 4K, uh, and the 4K results show you some interesting things, right? So at ultra quality settings, this is what Microsoft claims will be the top image quality settings when the game ships, the GTX 980 Ti was really only able to pull out uh, like 32 frames per second and the Fury X 29.7 frames per second, right? So there's a lot of headroom and this game is going to be uh, a real hog on GPU horsepower, which may make it useful for us as part of our normal GPU testing suite when the game actually does come out uh, later in the fall or later in the winter, whenever it happens to be. Um, so if you go through that, you can look through our average frame rates calculated by frame time. You can look through 95th percentile data if you're interested in that. We have all the GPU timings from that breakdown in the graph as well. And the kind of general consensus is that the 980 Ti is faster than the Fury X and the 950 is faster than the, than the R7 370, but that middle band AMD actually does very well. The 390X putting up a good performance against the GTX 980 and the uh, 380 versus the 960 leaning towards that as well. Um, if you kind of look ahead at what all of this means, right? With the ashes of the Singularity benchmark, we're able to say, um, I think, a lot of interesting things about the result, right? That uh, DX11 to DX12 scaled by this amount in AMD and this amount by NVIDIA, and we had this debate about did NVIDIA phone it in on the DX12 drivers or was AMD phoning in on the DX11 drivers? With this, we don't really have any of that debate because we're only seeing DX12 results. Uh, Microsoft did tell me today that they are going to enable a DX11 fallback mode when the game actually ships for those GPUs that are incapable of running DirectX 12, but they expect that to be a very, very small uh, group of GPUs, and it doesn't sound like it's going to be something that's user configurable. They're just going to kind of auto detect it and uh, make the changes when necessary. But regardless, for the benchmark, we can't show you here's a DX11 and here's a DX12 and here's the advantages that DirectX 12 gets you. Instead, we're looking at it more in a traditional benchmark in terms of here's how this GPU performed, here's how this GPU performed. They looked the same on the screen. Performance differences are, are what we're really considering here. Uh, and because of that, you know, its value as a DirectX 12 benchmark is maybe less uh, prominent because it doesn't have that ability to switch between uh, the relevant APIs, at least it doesn't right now. What we do see is a DirectX 12 title 
um, our second actual game that will be released using DirectX 12, right? I don't know if it'll actually be second out, but it's our second benchmark that we've seen. And it will be available in the not too distant future on Xbox One and Windows 10, cross-play compatible, all that type of stuff. It looks like a pretty interesting game uh, based on what we've seen and what I was researching uh, before doing this testing uh, in the past week or so. Uh, if you guys have any comments or thoughts, I, I, I would encourage you to either leave them on the comments thread at PCPro.com or leave them in the comments here on this YouTube video. Um, the one takeaway I have from this from a hardware perspective is that 980 Ti and Fury X priced about the same if you can actually find the Fury X anywhere, 980 Ti is a little faster. But maybe the most interesting thing is that the Radeon R9 390X at $100 less than the GeForce GTX 980, the more benchmarks I see, the more improvements I see in drivers, uh, it looks to be a more compelling option uh, for that mid-range, not even mid-range, but the kind of enthusiast class $400 to $500 video card uh, than I expected it to be. So that's maybe kind of my, my primary takeaway. Other than, hey, Fable Legends looks great. It's a fantastic benchmark. It's easy to run, and hopefully it'll be in a lot of people's hands very soon. Make sure you go to PCPro.com. We have a lot of cool stuff there, including a new interactive uh, uh, frame time graph thing that if you have any interest in that kind of nerdy detail, I think you'll be interested to check out. But there's also lots of screenshots uh, and all the videos of the entire benchmark playthrough as well. So that's it for now, guys. We'll see you next time.